When it came time to replace the chuck on my lathe, I got one with two-piece jaws. You can see the jaws are held on by two screws each. That gives you a couple of advantages. First and foremost, you don't have to hunt around for where you put that extra set of jaws if you've got one-piece jaws, because you can't just turn those around. The angle of the scroll prevents that. With these, it's just a matter of taking the screws out and flipping the jaws around. This particular chuck uses the tongue and groove method of holding the jaws on, which seems to be the most popular over here in the States. When you put these on, you're basically just lining up these parts with the gap in the middle and the long groove with the master jaw. These should be incredibly snug on there, so you may have to actually tap these on with a dead blow mallet. And then it's just a matter of putting the screws back in. And just like that, you're ready to hold larger diameter pieces. Where two-piece jaws really shine, though, is the ability to use soft jaws. Soft jaws are exactly what they sound like. They're jaws that are made out of machinable material. In this case, these are aluminum, but you can buy these made out of steel as well. And these I actually made here in the shop. You can look up the specification for the tongue and groove for each chuck. The specifications do change depending on the diameter of the chuck. So the jaws from a 6 inch chuck will not fit on an 8 inch and those won't fit on a 10. So just be aware of that when you're looking up the specs. When you're taking these off, a lot of times they are quite snug. So I break out the old crescent wrench and I don't put a lot of torque side to side. But if you just do some gentle wiggling, you can get the jaw off. I find this to be a little more preferable to driving them off, but your mileage may vary. You want to make sure that the tongue and groove and the chuck in general are totally free of dirt and chips. Uh, you really don't want to be clamping your chuck jaws down on a chip because of course that can screw with your accuracy. Likewise you want the soft jaw to be nice and clean as well. I've also numbered all of these. Uh, the chuck jaws themselves are numbered and that way I know that when I swap them back and forth I'm getting them back in the right spot. One thing I should point out is that I'm using as short a screw as possible and these counter bores are just about as deep as you can possibly make them. The reasoning behind that is that you could and probably would be machining all the way out to the ends of the jaws to hold larger parts and you don't want to machine into your screws. You might be asking right about now, why am I going through all this trouble? Why put soft jaws on here? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. First of all, if you're doing any sort of production with larger diameter parts, they're a fantastic option because you can actually machine in a shoulder and you've got a built-in stop, just like if you were using a collet stop. You'll always know when you put your part in there where the Z or the axial location is. They're also fantastic for things that would normally get crushed by the small contact point of the regular jaws. You can machine this pocket out and it's got just a lot more contact area that's not going to crush your part as easily. The last job that I did with these was actually machining down hockey pucks. So you've got a hard rubber, but a rubber nonetheless, and it was something that would be very easily crushed by the jaws. I should also point out that when you machine this pocket, it's going to maintain concentricity from part to part a lot better than just standard jaws will because you've machined it at that diameter at that scroll location. That is huge when we're talking about three jaw chucks, which are not really known for their accuracy. They're known for their speed, but they'd never clamp in the same place twice. The reason I'm using soft jaws today is because I have a very wide and very thin part. This part's only 75 thousandths or about two millimeters thick. When we're talking about thin parts, it's very difficult to put them in a chuck and not have them wobbling around like this. So soft jaws are fantastic for this because you can machine just this small little pocket that this fits tightly into and minimizes your wobble. Now this also has a really odd shape on the outside. This is a timing wheel pulley for someone's car project. It would be very difficult with standard jaws to hold this in a three jaw because you might actually end up being between teeth on one of the jaws and it would probably be pretty hard to keep from damaging these teeth. 
So soft jaws are the way to go here. Now that you know what soft jaws are used for, let me show you how to actually get them all set up. Believe it or not, it does not end when you get them clamped onto the chuck. Now we need to machine the pocket that we need. And in order to do this, you want to make sure that the jaws are actually loaded against something. You could clamp onto a piece of scrap, which is what we're going to do, and you could put it either on the master jaws in the back or onto the soft jaws. I'm going to use the soft jaws because uh, the pocket we're making is very shallow. They also have rings that go on the outside here with little studs that go into the holes, and those are handy if you need to bore all the way through the jaws. One thing you don't want to do is have them loaded on the outside. If that's loaded in the wrong direction, we need to be clamping onto something, not out to something. So I've just got a piece of one inch thick aluminum here that I'm going to clamp on. And now I know that my jaws are actually loaded against the scroll, so the pocket that I make is going to actually be quite repeatable, even though I only need to make one of these parts. The very first thing I need to do is establish where I am diameter wise. So I'm going to take a very light pass somewhere in the middle here where I can actually measure the diameter. Now that I have an idea of where I am, I can go ahead and make my shallow pocket along the outside. And that's going to go almost all the way out to the edge of the jaws. Touching off on the face as well. Uh, I can make this pocket as deep as the part is thick because uh, I don't need to machine anything on the outside. Okay, after a fair amount of cutting, I've got my pocket. I'm going to go ahead and deburr the holes and all these edges too, just to make sure that they don't interfere with the placement of my part. And then we're ready to actually do the boring. I've got my pocket adjusted so that this is a very snug fit with my little piece of scrap still in there. So this radius here is the exact size of my part. Now I can take out my scrap piece and I can clamp onto the part and do the bore. Now this is a nice secure fit. It's gripping onto multiple teeth on each part and it's not going to wobble back and forth because it's sitting flat against the bottom of that pocket. Best of all, everything's nice and concentric. From here on out, this is just a straightforward boring job. I've got plenty of clearance to break through this part because of the pocket that already existed in these jaws. But of course, if you needed to, you could bore right into the jaws and they're aluminum. They're not going to hurt your tool any more than your part will. Soft jaws are a fantastic option for not only production work, but for odd shaped pieces like this. If you've got something that's just really hard to hold in a standard way, consider soft jaws. They're not that expensive, of course you can make them yourself. If you're doing production work and you've got a lot of parts to make, you can make these out of steel so they'll last just a little bit longer. Otherwise aluminum is a really fantastic choice and it's really cheap. I plan on doing a video in the near future on making your own soft jaws, so keep an eye out for that. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.